whatever. Hi, internet type people. So, I've started putting stuff on YouTube again, apparently. Um, there's the William Production stuff, which there's a link to the first production vlog here. Also, there's, obviously, the uh, Alex and Michael play, which there's a link to the Warcraft 2 episode right here. Which is coming along, you know, it's happening, get out of here. So I want to get back into making videos that are just videos about the things I'm thinking about, like I was doing when I was doing that really long vlogging project a few summers ago. And when I was doing Twitter's Club, like, that felt good, I got to get stuff off my chest, and when I had an idea, I could do it. Both of those projects had really firm deadlines, and that was not something I did great with, because, I don't know, I like to come up with ideas, I like it when I come up with ideas, but being forced to constantly come up with new ones was always a bit of a strain on me, more so than I could handle. But I've got an idea, I've had it for a while, I've been thinking about it, and so let's do it, let's go. Can you really say that the best thing is your favorite thing? Does that make any sense? No, not really, let me explain. I had an English teacher in high school who told the class that it's worthless to say that Shakespeare is your favorite Elizabethan playwright and poet because he's the best. Some might take issue with me telling Shakespeare is the best because in truth he's simply more canonical and more popular than a lot of his contemporaries, not necessarily better than any of them. But for the sake of my argument, let's just say that being the most popular, being the most well-known, being the most long-lived, and being the most renowned of something makes you the best of that thing. So right off the bat, no. You could have read Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe and others. And after having read all of those, you could have decided that Shakespeare and his tragedies or his comedies or his romances, or whatever, are your favorite out of all those plays and all those poems. Maybe, you know, Shakespeare's sonnets are the ones that speak to you the most out of any of those. That's fair to say. But on the other hand, the reason why Shakespeare is the most popular is because his sonnets and plays speak the most to the most people, and therefore saying that they also speak to you the most doesn't really help differentiate you. If you simply say to any individual question, what's your favorite, uh, with, oh, I like the best one of those, it feels like you're at a sports tournament saying, I'm going to cheer for the team that wins. It's not really speaking to your personal investment in any creator or piece of work, it's just saying that you recognize goodness. Which brings up another issue, which is that if you say it's not helpful to say that your favorite thing out of a set is the best out of that set, then that implies that your favorite should be something that's flawed, which doesn't make sense. However, the idea that favoring something, not necessarily even despite its flaws, but because of its flaws, isn't as flawed an idea as it seems. I mean, like, mathematically, if you want to get the most literature out of your book, then you need to choose the best one, but if you're just looking for something that speaks to you, then maybe something that speaks to your flaws can also do that, even if it speaks to your flaws in a flawed way. Which brings me to my favorite thing out of the set, Fractal. Warning for people, I'm about to start talking about anime, so you can leave if you don't want to hear me talk about anime. Fractal is an 11 episode anime from 2011 that is amazing and I love it and it's bad and I love it. <laughs> That's going too far. Fractal isn't by any means bad and I highly recommend it but it has lots of obvious flaws and those flaws are part of the reason why I like it. Fractal is set in a possible future where a augmented reality system called Fractal rules the world and holograms are projected on top of real life. The disputable realness of the fractal system is at one of the philosophical cores of the series, and the question of whether something that makes people dependent on it is okay if it makes them happy is something that the show wrestles with the number of points in the 11 episodes. And even something so important as the way the world works is never really properly explained. 
there are entire areas of the world that are revealed to be entirely holograms, which means you can't walk on the roads without falling down onto the real road underneath it. But why such a system would be allowed to exist is so baffling. Why would you project a road over a place where there's no road? People are gonna fall and people are gonna die. People have the opportunity to create virtual duplicates of themselves called doppels, and then doppels go around and act on your behalf so you can essentially live twice, although it's really unclear how doppels function. In some scenes, it's implied that doppels operate entirely independently of the original human. Some folks think it's strange I've never had my own doppel. Truth is, I just don't like the idea of there being another me running around. But other scenes make it really clear that people control their doppels as if they were virtual avatars existing in this virtual augmented world. <laughs> And both of those are kind of mutually exclusive, and yet they aren't in the story. Usually when you come across a problem like this in a story, there are two things you can do. You can try to rationalize it using theme and authorial intent to justify why this one event seems to break the rules of the world, or you can try to look past it and accept that there's a problem with the work, but the other parts of the work that are still good make up for it. I go back and forth on these in Fractal because there are some things that I can say are part of the feel of the world, like not knowing exactly how the system works is supposed to represent the frustration of a lot of the characters who don't understand how their world works. But there are other things that aren't justifiable. For example, in the first episode, our main character, Clay, meets a mysterious girl named Frin, and she makes a comment that I've often heard that the people living in this era romanticize the idea of personal freedom until it defines them. They won't be tied down, not for anything. What do you mean, people living in this era? Everybody who watches this scene thinks that she's from another time. I did when I first watched it, my girlfriend did when I showed it to her, and even the TV Tropes page lists the fish out of time trope based on this line. But that's not part of the story at all! What the heck? What the heck? Think silly things! What I'm getting at is that most of the problems in good things are like fingerprints on glass. You can either look at them as smudges that are obscuring your vision into something good, or you can see them as evidence that people have been there before you. And frankly, people make mistakes. Even teams of people in charge of creating stuff make mistakes. And when you see a twerky little mistake in something that you love, sometimes it just makes it all that much more lovable because you can say to yourself this isn't the best and other people take issue with it because other people have different tastes from me and i don't like it just because it's the best example of what it's trying to do i like it because it was created by people like me thinking about things that are like the things that i think about and i think that's way more important when reading a story than just you know getting to the end of the book looking through the story and seeing the creators, seeing the ideas that the characters and the events are trying to depict. That's the magic of stories. Wow! Turn up the cheese! So, thanks for watching. I'm not really sure if I got to the meat of what I was trying to get to, but I gave it a shot and I got to talk about Fractal, which is always good. Um, so, other stuff that's coming up on the channel soon. Hopefully, no. Definitely, by the end of the week, I'm going to post William production vlog number two. And that's going to be an interview with me and William, the creators of the franchise. Because it's a franchise, because there's a sequel. <laughs> also, I've been nominated for the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, and you guys know me. I'm all about doing stuff that's popular, but I like to put a little spin on it, if you know what I mean. You guys don't know that because it's been months since I put up a video. Also, my sister, my girlfriend, and I have been working on a secret project. It's secret because I don't talk to anybody ever. <laughs> and we're doing principal photography on that this weekend. So we can expect to see something cool and artsy coming up on the Illegal Characters page. Whoa! Uh, keep on being strange. Uh, you'll see me next time. I like that. I like that sign off. That's a sign off from the old thing. Thanks for watching. You'll see me next time. <laughs> Shakespeare and fractal arms the exact same color. Coincidence? I think not.